As we conclude our study of chapter 5, we're going to look at what are called arithmetic sequences. Now, arithmetic sequences will behave a lot like linear functions, but with a couple of key differences. So in order to get started with this, let's start with a few terminology items. So our first three items we're going to discuss are sequence, term, and what's called A sub N. A sequence is simply an ordered list of numbers, or it's a set of numbers put in order that follow a pattern. Now those patterns will be different, but as long as it follows a pattern is in order, it is a sequence. Next is term, and a term is each number or item of a sequence. So if you're looking at the sequence of the whole natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, and 4, the first term is 1, the second term is 2, third term is 3, the fourth term is four, and so on until you're finished. And our last here, a little bit different notation, this is what is called A sub N. A way of noting or denoting a specific term in a sequence where N is the number of the term. So if I talk about A sub seven, then I'm looking at the seventh term in the sequence. If I look at A sub one, I'm looking at the first term of the sequence. Sequences start at a point to move forward, so you don't really have an a sub 0 or an a sub negative anything because your sequence would not move backwards. Now, in addition to this, we also have a couple of other items that we're going to be discussing. Those are arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence is a sequence of numbers that can be built by adding the same number each time, and that number we're adding is called the common difference. So, as we look at different sets of numbers, we're going to be able to determine whether or not they have a common difference, and if so, what that is in order to generate an arithmetic sequence. So, let's start looking at examples. So, here we have a fairly standard arithmetic sequence, negative 7, negative 14, negative 21, and negative 8. And what we are tasked with is writing the next three terms in the sequence. In order to do this, we need to determine how this sequence is being built. How do we, what do we add to negative 7 to end up at negative 14? What do we add to negative 14 to add, end up at negative 21? And we, what do we add to negative 21 to end up at negative 28? Well, each time we are adding a negative 7. So in this sequence, our common difference is negative 7. In arithmetic sequences, you can only add numbers. You cannot subtract. But adding a negative is the same as subtracting. So we simply say we are adding a negative 7. If we were to continue this pattern, what would be the next three terms in the sequence? Well, adding negative 7 to negative 28, we end up with negative 35. Adding negative 7 to that, we have a negative 42. And adding a negative 7 to that, we end up with a negative 49. So the next three terms in this sequence are negative 35, negative 42, and negative 49. Pretty standard. Determine how the sequence is being built and evaluate or figure out what the next terms are. I'd like you get a little practice of your own on this one. So here are three sequences that I'd like you to find the next three terms in each of them. Pause the video for a couple minutes, determine what the common difference is in each of these, and generate the next three terms. Here are your answers. I'm sorry, I had a small typo there in problem two. That last term should have been a 1.4. Hopefully you caught that. The sequences for number one, it's adding 12 each time. So we go to 36, 48, and 60. Number two was adding four tenths each time. So we go to one and eight tenths, two and two tenths, two and six tenths. And for number three, we are subtracting one quarter each time. So we move to three, two and three quarters, two and one half. Now with these arithmetic sequences, we do have the option of being able to plot points and graph them for those who are more visual type learners to be able to see how the sequence is being built. 
Now, as we do this, it's going to look a lot like a linear graph with one key difference, and we'll talk about that when we do it. So let's come up with an arithmetic sequence to plot at this point. So we have here the arithmetic sequence 4, 8, 12, 16, and so on. And we need to build a graph out of this. So let's start by associating the number of the term, n, with the term itself, a sub n, and arrange this into a table. So our first term is 4, our second term is 8, third term is 12, fourth term is 16, and we continue from there. So now if we take this information, these look a lot like points for a graph, so that's exactly how we're going to treat them, and let's plot them onto our graph itself. And as you can see from the points, they do form a straight line. Now the difference between graphing this and graphing your typical linear function is that the points of a, any sequence are just that, they're points. You do not connect them. This would be cons analogous to what would be a discrete function as opposed to a continuous. The point one and a half, six, does not exist in an arithmetic sequence. We only have these individual distinct points that sit out here on their own. And I know that this was kind of a brief go over of how to graph func uh, arithmetic sequences, but we're well versed now in being able to plot points and that's all it is. Just remember when doing these, do not connect the points. Being able to generate an arithmetic sequence from a list is nice, but what would happen if we were asked for the 100th term of a sequence, or the 1,000th? Having to generate the first 99 or the first 999 terms in order to get that 100th or that 1,000th respectively would be quite tedious and difficult. So we have a way of being able to write an equation for an arithmetic sequence, and it is very similar to writing an equation for a linear function with a few small differences. So let's take a look at what that would be like. The main form for writing an arithmetic sequence is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. Let's look at each of these parts. a sub n really doesn't change. That's what our answer is going to be as we run through the formula. a sub 1 is the first term of the sequence d is the common difference that exists in the sequence. Looking at this from a linear functions point of view, d would be similar to our slope. Our first term, although not exactly, would be kind of similar to our y-intercept, except y-intercept happens at zero, and we do not have a zeroth term of our sequence. So let's take a sequence and see if we can build a function for it. With the, func with the sequence 14, 11, 8, and 5, and continuing on, we need to do a couple things. We need to be able to identify what is our a sub 1, and we also need to identify what our d, or a common difference, is. So a sub 1, the first term of the sequence, is 14. Our d, our common difference, is how do we move between terms of the sequence? To move from 14 to 11, 11 to 8, or 8 to 5, we are adding a negative 3. So taking these pieces and placing them into the sequence itself, we end up with a sub n equals a sub 1, which is 14, plus our common difference, negative 3 times n minus 1. And this is the formula itself. Now a lot of people will want to try to combine the a sub 1 and our d, but you cannot do that. Order of operations tells us we have to do what's inside of the grouping symbols, the parentheses first, then multiply that by 3, negative 3, and the last thing we do is add that answer to our 14 that we started with. So, to get a little bit of practice with that, let's find, in our sequence here, what is a sub 50? Well, since I replaced the n in my original f function with 50, that means n on the other side will also be replaced with 50. 
So a sub 50 equals 14 plus a negative 3 times 50 minus 1. And running through our order of operations, this means 14 plus a negative 3 times 49, which is 14 plus a negative 147. 14 plus a negative 147 is a negative 133. So our 50th term of the sequence would be a negative 133, and we can get that without having to generate the first 49 terms before it. So let's take this and get a little bit of practice on your own. Here come a couple of uh, sequences to work with. Here are your sequences. Now for each of them, you need to find the equation for a sub n, and then what is a sub 25. Pause the video for a couple of minutes, build those up, see what you come up with, and then check back for your answers. So our sequences generate as follows. We have 4 plus 1 times n minus 1, with our a sub 25 being 28. Number 5, we have 8 plus 8 times n minus 1, with our 25th term being 200. And number 6, our a sub n is negative 2 plus 1 times n minus 1, with our 25th term being the number 22. Now you can see an application to these problems on page four, sorry, 246. There's example number 4. We'll show you where you can find this. A lot of applications for this when it comes to purchasing items that happen in whole unit increments, meaning you can't buy half of something. So, pause the video, or look, watch over, look over that example. Make sure you can understand it. Try on your own question number 10 on that same page, and be ready to discuss it next time we get together for class.